fuse panel that uh, I've done the initial repairs on. Now we're selecting the blade that will do the horizontal sweep, which will be a number one blade. It has a slight radius in it. I'm doing a test sweep to see how it moves across the panel, and that one's going to work just great. Now on the vertical radius, we have quite a bit more of a curve. We're going to use a number three blade. So I'm doing a test sweep across the damage area with that. And that one works just perfect for that application. We're applying our mud. And the thing to remember here is to completely cover the damaged area and beyond it a little bit. I'm taking my time to completely cover the area. We don't want any gaps in the mud. That will assure a excellent sweep across the mud with perfect shape. I have placed masking tape in the door jam in case I get any bondo in there. I will be making a sweep over both panels after I complete this initial sweep. Again, careful to cover every square inch of the area that we're doing the sweep over. Extending it out a little bit further. Okay, we've finished covering it completely. Now we're ready to do our sweep. We're going to do a horizontal sweep, and we've pre-selected the number one blade for that purpose. Positioning our fingers on the edge of the blade, one at the uh, door jam at the edge of the door, the other one just outside the damaged area, about in the middle of the door. Making our sweep, initially you can see that there are a few gaps in the bondo as we make that sweep. That will all resolve itself as we continue to sweep across it. I'm going to collect the extra bondo from the edge of the blade and place that at the top of the door where I'm going to do my sweep down from that area, dragging that uh, plastic filler in a bead across the entire repair. This gives it an opportunity to move and organize the Bondo in a very accurate way. You can see that we have, once again, I'm removing it and placing that Bondo at the top of the sweep, and I will continue to move down it until I get a sweep that I like. You can see the Bondo being blended, moved and arranged in such a way where it is, giving, is taking the shape of the uh, adjacent areas that are undamaged. You can also see where the Bondo uh, toward the middle of the door is being blended to zero where there is no Bondo. That's the extent of the damage out there and it doesn't allow for any more uh, Bondo to, to be uh, applied in that area. I'll continue to do this until I get a sweep that I'm happy with, and that is essentially good coverage from top to bottom with uh, the Bondo being swept to zero around the parameter of the damage. On the right side, I'm not too worried about um, the Bondo being blended to zero because I'm uh, pushing it on the edge of the door and there's not a whole lot to see there, but it is taking the shape on both sides. I'm happy with that sweep. I'm going to collect the extra Bondo on the edge of the blade and apply it to the adjacent panel 
where the damage continues. Getting good coverage once again from top to bottom covering the entire area that is going to be swept. It's essential that you do this to get a perfect sweep. Again, using the edge of the panel as my one control surface and on the right side blending it with the panel that's undamaged. This is going to create several lines in that panel on the horizontal plane that are going to be completely consistent with the original shape of the panel. removing the extra. Now after the panel has, the bondo has cured slightly, I trim it off with a spring steel spreader. I have uh, shaped mine so it's round and it tends to uh, take the bondo off a little bit easier for me, but just a uh, spring steel spreader will remove the extra. This is easy to clean up and it'll make your work a lot easier before you start sanding. The reason I removed it from the front of that uh, repair in the middle of the door is because where it blends the Bondo, where you can see the paint through the Bondo, that's as far as we need to go with it. Anything beyond there is uh, overfill and we want to remove that. to begin our sanding with 180 grit and as I move across it all I'm trying to do is knock down the surface of the plastic filler the orange peel if you will on the Bondo I'm not trying to shape it I'm not trying to let the sander go into the paint area because I can create more problems by sanding into the paint and that will require further uh, applications of Bondo to resolve those low spots. So I'm holding it flat, I'm buzzing across it, trying to, to work only the Bondo area, and when I get that knocked down to, uh, to the point where it's got a nice surface to it, if I see low spots, here we have the uh, sanding disc was clogged up, I replace it with another one. Clogging your sanding pad is pretty normal when you're using fine paper like this. Continuing on. The surface is turning a light color where the surface is being sanded. We can still see some darker areas, those are low spots which I will, uh, I will identify at the end of sanding this. If we run our hand up and down in there we can find that there's a low spot through the middle. I anticipated that, that's why we're doing a crisscross repair, a horizontal and vertical sweep. I outline it with a pencil, that way I don't lose track of it and that pencil will transmit through the Bondo and show me that I've covered it when I do my sweep. I'm not doing any sanding except for light sanding at this point until I get a good surface that's relatively sh uh, straight. Again, I'm doing my test sweep with my number three blade that accommodates that radius. We're going to apply our Bondo, again, applying it all the way to the edge of that pencil, even beyond it slightly. That will assure uh, plenty of plastic filler to work with and to fill that low area. We're going right across the door jam, which has been 
filled with masking tape. I roll a bead of masking tape and I place it in there and it serves to keep the Bondo out of the door jamb. This way we can blend the two panels together seamlessly. Taking our number three blade, running it on the vertical plane, we're going to reproduce all of that area that had uh, that was low and give it beautiful shape again placing the bondo at the front of the sweep and moving it across there's a bead on the edge of the blade where I just continue to sweep across it until I get a sweep that I'm happy with I'll remove the bondo at the bottom there and place it once again at the front of the sweep along with the bondo that's on the blade and do another sweep across it. I want to go down a little bit lower. I wasn't quite happy with the the coverage on that so I'm continuing to work it and I'll do a few more sweeps until I get it exactly the way I want. We can see I've, I'm sweeping all the way down to the second line I made and that's where I want to be. To completely cover it and create the line that I'm looking for. Notice I approach the door jam at an angle rather than just straight up and down in alignment with the door jam that stops it stops the blade from hooking up in that door jam if there's any edge that can catch it here's a sweep that I'm happy with I think we'll leave it like that again we're going to trim off that little bit of extra with a spring steel blade which you can purchase at our website Again, any extra that is left outside the line that we have marked before we do our sweep, we want to remove that as carefully as possible. This will help us to sand and prep the surface without any uh, additional bondo that we need to work down. We've completely covered the areas that I've outlined with the pencil. We have a beautiful radius. I can feel it with my hand already. And we're ready to uh, knock that down. Again, we have, um, we're using 150 grit this time, just to make it a little bit quicker. Still a very fine paper. We can see that it's sanding down much nicer this time. It's completely filled. It has a beautiful shape to it. Again, we're working up to a perfect shape through consecutive sweeps, addressing the low areas that we find as we approach uh, the final blocking. Again, careful not to sand the areas beyond the, the sweep. We don't want to do any, create any low spots. We just want to knock down. You can see the paper is gummed up. We'll put another sheet on there and finish our sanding. Now I'm going to apply a guide coat. This will be our first block sanding. This is a 3M dry guide coat. It's a black powder. You put it on like uh, waxing a car and it will give you uh, a guide coat that will make it quite easy to identify low spots if any exist in your blocking process. Cover the entire area We then take our blower and blow off any 
uh, extra. And we're going to use the 150 on the long block. As I start sanding, I can see that there's a whole lot of area that is already coming right into shape. It's got a beautiful shape. I'm using a hard block so it identifies the panel. Any low spot will be immediately identified, whether it be uh, just one or two mils low, it'll show up plainly and it'll make it very easy to uh, identify and resolve that issue with the next sweep. We can see two areas right in the middle close to the door jam which I expected that was the lowest part uh, of the damage that comes up almost immediately the rest of it around it's looking pretty good we're sanding we can see the pencil lines on the panel it transmits through the bondo and gives you an indication even after you cover over it cleaning it up a little bit with blowing off the dust Continuing my sanding. I'll continue sanding this until all the Bondo has been sanded and I'll be able to identify what needs to be done in the next sweep. Here it is after it's been blocked out, and I am now going to identify the low spots that still exist. I see one there from the original damage. There's a low spot there, indicated by the guide coat. One there, a big one right in the middle, and a slight one right at the edge into the rear door. Now what we need to do is sweep those existing areas that are still slightly low and I'll start with the big one right in the middle completely covering it with Bondo all the way to the pencil line that I've drawn around it always draw your pencil line further than the damage just to give yourself a safe margin for applying your Bondo and, and making sure that you completely cover that low spot Again, we're using the number one blade for our horizontal sweep. Starting at the top and just moving down, applying pressure on the pencil lines, which is the outermost area of the damage that still exists. The outermost damage area of the low spot. I'll continue to sweep down that until I get a sweep that I like. Once I've done that, I move to the next area. Again, trying to choreograph my applications of Bondo so I do not move over an area that I've already achieved a perfect sweep on. That would only uh, slow, slow down the process. I'd have to do it again. I'm doing all of my horizontal sweeps, making sure I don't touch the areas that I've swept previous to that. If you find uh, any hard spots in the Bondo, simply pick them out. They do get in there occasionally and the sweep will We'll identify those so you can pick them out. I'm taking the Bondo off the edge of the blade and applying it once again at the top of the sweep. This will give me the material to move across the damage area and to give me a, a beautiful sweep.
begin applying pressure at the edges of the blade just outside the damage area. I'll use the last little bit of Bondo to fill the uh, slight low spot we have on the rear door at the edge of the Bondo there. Again, careful not to touch the area that I've swept there in the middle. I find a, a little bit of uh, a hardened part of Bondo in there. I'll have to pick that out. You can see the line that it's dragged down. Get that out of there and uh, continue on with my sweep. This is a great way to move and organize the Bondo and to utilize it over the over the course of several sweeps. You can really utilize the, the material well. happy with that sweep. We're going to let it go there. I'll remove the little bit that still exists on the edge of the blade. Clean that up a bit and let the Bondo harden. We don't let it harden completely. Just begin to solidify and then we can trim off the uh, areas that uh, are there. Now, we identify two extra ones that we need to do. We've done a sweep over these three low spots. We have the these two left over to do. We're sanding it once again with 150, lightly sanding it, just knocking down the surface. Being careful again not to sand into the damage that we've already blocked out just be very light in your sanding holding it down firmly in the uh, in the areas that you're knocking down the surface that you've just swept again you just want to knock it down knock down the orange peel and uh, carefully sand at the edge of that If you find that there is a, an edge, too much Bondo at the, uh, at the edge of your sweep, you can put a piece of masking tape to protect the, uh, the area that you are sanding across. Now again, we're going to apply our dry guide coat on the areas that we've just applied Bondo and have done our sweep. We don't have to cover the entire panel. Those other areas have already been blocked and they're satisfactory. Blowing off the extra dust, the extra guide coat. Taking our hard block and sanding it once again with 150 grit. You can use 180 grit. You could even use 120 grit if you so choose. I like to keep it within the, the 180 and 150 grit range. Again, we can see that that area has been filled and that it is uh, blocking down very nicely, very quickly. Continued to block it and this is the result of that. There, all the areas came into shape beautifully just as I expected. 
we still have this area and this area to finish. In blocking I could see that there was still a little bit of a low spot and that traveled a little bit further than I thought. I'm circling it again with a pencil and I'm ready to do my final two spots that I need to sweep. Again I'm applying my plastic filler right to the edge of the pencil line that I've drawn around circling the damage area so I don't lose track of it. The pencil lines on the Bondo will never give you any trouble at all in the paint process. This has been tried and true hundreds of times in a body shop setting so don't give it a second thought. Never use pen. Pencil is just great. Moving the camera slightly so I can see the entire so you can see the entire sweep that I'm doing. Now I'm using the number two blade and that is not the blade that I started with so I'm going to switch blades but as we can see the number two blade is just a little stiff. I grabbed it by accident but this is something that you can do sometimes and if it's not sweeping the way it was initially take note of it and change to the correct blade. I'm going to go back with the number three and here's the number three and let's do our sweep again. We'll apply our mud at the front of the sweep and draw it across the repair. I can tell immediately that this is the right blade because it's the one I pre-selected and it sweeps beautifully across that panel. Alright, I'm going to take the extra mud on the edge of the blade and I'm going to apply it to the last area that we need to fill. Again, not touching the area I've just swept. I don't want to create any problems in that area. So I'll do a horizontal sweep and I'm using the number one blade because that's what we're, we started out with and that's what we're going to use. Uh, it's stiff enough to accommodate the slight radius that we've identified initially on that panel. I've only cleaned the edge of the blade. That's all you need to do when you're doing your sweep. You don't have to clean the entire blade. There we have a beautiful sweep. Clean up the blade a little bit and let the Bondo begin to harden. I'll remove the tape at this point that's protecting the areas I don't want to get any Bondo in. It can be very difficult digging it out of a, a door handle uh, recessment like that or uh, a number of areas. You want to keep it Bondo out of any area that is not being repaired. I'm doing my sanding here again with 150 grit just lightly sanding over it knocking down the orange peel in the Bondo. Remember we have a beautiful shape we just want to knock the surface down to get the stickiness off and to uh, reduce the texture of the Bondo so it'll be quickly sanded by block. Same thing with this area here, we're knocking it down, you can see that it's pretty consistent in its appearance as we uh, sand across it with the DA, indicating that uh, we've filled it and it's got a beautiful shape to it. Again we apply our dry guide coat to the entire area that we've uh, just sanded.
blowing off the extra guide coat we're now ready to sand again with the 150 grit on a hard block we're moving across the areas that we just filled and they are very obviously uh, filled and have the correct shape we just need to work the surface until we have knocked it all down removing all of the uh, guide coat if there was any low spot in the guide coat that still remained we'd do another fill but this is going to um, this is going to cover all those areas I'll do a slight little bit of sanding here the paper is gummed up so I'll change it and finish it this is what it looks like after I've done that final sanding you can see the five additional sweeps we did from the first vertical and horizontal sweeps that we did I'm cleaning off some areas where the bondo crept in underneath the uh, tape cleaning up removing the tape that I put on to protect the paint we now have the door that we're going to open up with a 1 8 drill bit simply hold it up against the door edge and move down carefully this will cut out a small gap in the bondo allowing you to open the door and then you can remove the masking tape that I've applied in there and uh, we can finish up the sanding on the edge of the door and on the edge of the quarter panel and we'll have a job that is ready for paint taking it all the way down We've now opened up the door. We'll begin sanding the edge of it with a block just to clean up the edge. The edge will be a little rough from the drill bit moving across it, lightly sanding it. We'll bring it flat up against the metal and do the same on the quarter panel and we're ready to move on. This panel is now ready for paint. We have a panel that blends seamlessly from the front door to the rear door. You couldn't get it any better. Now here it is after paint before we've assembled the car and you can see the lines indicating the straight contours beautifully matching one panel to the next certainly better than the car was originally with production shortfalls you rarely get that sort of perfection again sighting it out is the greatest indication of how that panel looks how it turned out and we have a panel that is two panels that seamlessly merge together they have the radius moving in a vertical and a horizontal plane perfectly matching the original shape of that car. Sighting out a panel is the ultimate litmus test. It will tell you where you're at and from the customer's perspective it's all they're interested in. If it looks beautiful and it stays looking beautiful, the life of the car, that is the most important objective and you will achieve both of those issues when using the blades.